Hello friend! I talk a lot about how to hand letter, but today I want to share with you how not to hand letter. I'm going to be sharing five lettering mistakes, some of those things that you might not even realize that you're doing, but don't worry, these mistakes are easily fixable and I'm going to share that with you as well, so let's get right into the video. The first hand lettering mistake that you might be making is that you might be trying to hold all of your hand lettering tools the same way. And I'm actually not talking about the angle as much as I'm talking about the way you actually hold the pen in your hand. Now, not all pens or hand lettering tools are the same. So it would kind of make sense that some might fit a bit differently in your hand, right? At least for me personally, I find that the exact way I hold my pen varies a bit between different types of pens even if the difference is ever so subtle. But brush pens have different size tips. Some pens might need to be held at a certain angle to get good ink flow, and on top of that, the body of your pens can range when it comes to width and even shape. And I think all of these things can affect the way that you grip your pen. When it comes to brush lettering, I still do recommend that you hold your pen at around a 45 degree angle, but we don't really talk a lot about the grip on your actual pen. But as you can see in these examples, some pens I'm wrapping my thumb around the pen and others I'm not. When I use a pen that has a triangular grip, I have my fingers in a different position than when I'm holding a chunky round marker. Sometimes people say that I'm actually holding my pen wrong, but the fact is that sometimes it just feels more comfortable for me to wrap my thumb around, but sometimes it doesn't. Now this is not to say that there is a right or wrong way for each pen or that you're holding your pen wrong or that I'm holding my pen right. But I just wanted to give you a reminder that I think it's okay to experiment a little bit in this area until you find something that works well for you and the supplies that you have. So what you can do instead is to get to know your tools and see what works best for you with each individual pen. Don't assume that just because you hold one pen a certain way that you'll hold all pens that way. Get to know each hand lettering tool by itself. The second hand lettering mistake is to assume that fancy or expensive brush pens will easily solve all of your lettering frustrations. In this example, I have done some hand lettering using six different pens or markers. Three are well known and loved by lots of people, and three are, for lack of better words, super cheap. Now, can you easily tell which hand lettering was done with a fancier brush pen and which was done with a Crayola marker? It's true, not all pens are the same quality. However, just because we have an expensive brush pen does not mean that we'll easily be able to hand letter with that brush pen. What I think you should do instead is to invest wisely and practice with what you do have already, even if that's something cheap. And know that no matter what kind of pen you purchase, you will likely have a bit of a learning curve, even if you've been hand lettering for a while. So yes, I think it's okay to purchase new markers and pens. And yes, I have a lot of brush pens that I have tested out over the years, but I just don't want you to purchase thinking that buying new pens will make hand lettering easier. Sometimes it's just a matter of getting to know the tools that you already have. New brush pens and new tools and new supplies I think can help enhance your hand lettering, but if you don't have the basics down, I think there's a good chance that there will be some struggle there. So that brings me to my third hand lettering mistake. And the third hand lettering mistake that you might be making is freehanding your hand lettering a bit too early. And I don't just mean tracing letters. I mean lettering on a completely blank piece of paper and still expecting to see neat and even hand lettering that is written out in a straight line. That is hard to do for lots of us. I have been lettering for years and I still sometimes write at a slant when I'm freehand hand lettering. Not only that, but it's hard to create that neat and even hand lettering when you are doing it completely freehand. And this one is a super simple fix. What you can do instead is practice your hand lettering using a blank lined piece of paper. I actually have some blank lined pages in varying sizes available for free on my website. You can find those in the resource library on my website or linked in the description box below. So if you don't have any of those yet, you can go ahead and grab them for free today. Again, I will leave that link below. But if this still feels a bit too freehand, then make sure to grab the simple strokes and variations worksheets that are also available in the free resource library. These can help you with your simple strokes if you are not yet feeling comfortable with freehand hand lettering, or if you are working on tip number two where you are getting to know your brush pens. And the fourth hand lettering mistake you might be making is being afraid to try something new. There are so many ways that we can be creative 
even within hand lettering. Changing up our technique is one way to create a unique style of hand lettering, but it's not the only way. Switching our tools is another way, whether it's watercolor lettering, adding shading, writing in block letters, even monoline watercolor. There are so many different options. If you're feeling stuck or maybe you're searching for your own unique style, maybe try something new. Don't be afraid of making mistakes. Don't be afraid of messing up your page. Just start. And the fifth hand lettering mistake that you might be making is to not learn your ovals. There are lots of simple strokes that make up the alphabet and I am definitely not here to say that those are not important. But the oval is the base of lots of our letters and when we can create a really neat, even and consistent looking oval, I think this can help our letters to be more consistent overall. On the flip side, if your ovals are all over the place, you might feel like your lettering is a bit sloppy, inconsistent, or disproportionate as well because the base of lots of your popular letters like A, O, and lowercase d are different each time you draw them. Practicing your ovals and getting them down to a consistent size and shape can be a game changer. To help you with this, I have another freebie in the resource library that you can grab and print out to practice for yourself. And on top of that, if you are wanting to learn more about how to hand letter, you can join my free hand lettering course at howtohandletter.com. I hope that this video was helpful for you in learning to overcome some of those difficult parts of hand lettering. For more hand lettering tutorials, make sure to check out my beginner hand lettering playlist here, and you can also follow along over on Instagram at how to hand letter. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you over in my next video. Mm -hmm.